Hello and welcome back to another IB Math speedrun with me, Vince. So in today's, so on this speedrun, we're going to be going through how to get the derivatives of some trigonometric functions from first principles. So let's jump right in. Okay. So um, sorry, I'm back. So the first thing we need to prove is we need to prove that um, let's write it out instead. So d sine two x over dx. So, so um, the derivative of sine 2x with respect to x is equal to 2 cosine 2x. So we need to prove this. Okay, so let's do first principles. So this is equal to effectively um, the limit as h tends to 0 of sine 2x plus h minus sine 2x. Actually, no, technically it is sine x. Uh, well, um, yeah, minus it is minus sine 2x. So um, we can do this sort of thing all over h. Because it's really sine 2 times x plus h, and we can say this is h over 2, actually. So um, it is 2 times x plus h over 2 minus sine 2x, 2 times x, all over h over 2. We can do that because um, putting h over 2 makes it easier and it won't make a difference to the limit since as h tends to 0, h over 2 also tends to 0. So it's fine if we divide it. So we get, if we expand this formula, we get um, sine 2x cosine h over 2 plus sine h over 2 cosine 2x minus sine 2x all over h over 2. So from here, we want to group all the terms with um, h over 2 in them. So uh, here we can get cosine 2x times sine h over 2 over h over 2. And as uh, h tends to 0, this entire thing will tend to, um, well, 1 really, since both of them tend to 0. So that's okay. And then we also add sine 2x times cosine h over 2 minus 1 all over h over 2. Um, and the thing is, as... Oh, wait, no, 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 no. Sorry, I, I've made a mistake. This should. When we expand this, because we multiply 2 by h over 2, this should turn into cosine h. So we have sine 2 cosine h plus sine h cosine 2 still over h over 2. So we have. Because, yeah, otherwise this would tend to um, something weirder. So we have cosine h minus 1 over h over 2. Um, yeah, so this tends to 0 and this tends to 1 because as h tends to 0, sine h over h over 2 will tend to um, 0, uh, tend to 1, and cosine h minus 1 over h over 2 will tend to 0. So um, actually, we, we, what I meant to write is we expand this from the limit. So this is limit as h tends to 0 over here and the limit as h tends to 0 over here. So what we're left with is simply, um, oh, hold on. No, this tends to 2. Anyways, yeah, so this tends to 0 since um, it's cosine h tends to 0, cosine tends to 1. Um, so, but this over here is h tends to 0, yeah. Um, this will actually tend to 2, this part over here. So we have cosine 2x times 2. So this should be equal to 2 cosine 2x. So yeah, that is the solution to this problem. Uh, on to the next one. And so the next problem is we need to prove that the derivative of sine 2x plus 3 all over the derivative of x is equal to 2 cosine 2x plus 3. Um, and how do we do this one? Well, 
well, this is equal to the limit as h tends to 0 of sine 2x plus 3. So the best way to do this would actually be to add h minus 3 plus 3. And this is because, uh, of course, this minus 3 plus 3 adds up to 0, but this means we can group this into 2 times h over 2 minus 3 over 2, and then we have plus 3 at the end. Of course, minus sine 2x plus 3. And all over h, and so this is equal to the limit as h tends to 0 of sine 2x plus 3 cosine h. Actually, hold on. Yeah, no, why am I doing this? This should just be h. I, I don't know what I'm doing. Here, my bad. Plus h. Minus um, plus sine h cosine 2x plus 3. minus sine 2x plus 3, all over h. Ah, wait, sorry, no, I just remembered why I did that. Um, this is because, so we can actually transform the denominator not into h, but into h over 2 minus 3 over 2. So what we're doing is, if we introduce this term over here, say h is actually equal to plus 3, then we can introduce this h over 2 minus 3 over 2 here. And yeah, this will still, um, yeah, it, it's because we're adding an offset to h, which should not make a difference in theory, because as h tends to 0, this should still tend to the correct number. Yeah. So cosine h plus sine co uh, h cosine 2x plus 3 minus, okay, all over h minus 3 over 2. So this is equal to sine if we um, group the variables, psi 2x plus 3 times the limit as h tends to 0 of cosine h minus 1 over h minus 3 over 2 plus cosine 2x plus 3 times the limit as h tends to 0 of sine h over h minus 3 over 2. So now, uh, well, we can simplify this. Cosine h minus 1 over h minus 3 halves will tend to 0, since this top part tends to 0. So that's nothing. So over here, we have a sine h tends to 0, h minus 3 over 2 will tend to um, 2. Yeah. Yeah, h minus, sine h over h minus 3 over 2 will tend to 2 since we multiply both top and bottom by 2. So then we get 2 cosine 2x plus 3 as the derivative. So yeah, that is it. OK, on to the final one. And the final one is d. We need to prove that d cotangent x over dx is equal to negative cosec squared x, oh, ne ne negative cosec x squared. OK. So what we have here is the limit as h tends to 0 of um, more or less cotangent x plus h minus the cotangent of x all over h. Um, and so we can expand this into the cotangent of, uh, sorry, the <clears throat> cosine of x plus h over the sine of uh, x plus h minus the cosine of x over the sine of x all over h. And so this is equal if we um, expand this, or actually, no, if we multiply, cross multiply here, we have sine x cosine x plus h minus cosine x sine x plus h all over 
sine sine x times cosine x times no, sine x plus, times sine h x plus h um, all over h again. So sine x times sine x plus h, and then this is all over h. So uh, we can simplify this a little bit up here. So um, what we can do is this is actually the double angle expansion if we have sine, what is this, x minus x plus h, no, x minus x minus h, all over sine x times sine x plus h, times sine x plus h, and I guess we can, um, yeah, all over h. So we can simplify this a little here because sine of, mm, ah, it's because this tends to, this tends to zero at the same rate as this tends to zero, but this tends to zero from a negative side. So actually we can take that out of the limit. Remember, we're still in the limit as h tends to zero. So we can take this into negative one, which is because this over this should be negative one. And then the limit as h tends to zero of one over sine x, sine x plus h. And then so what we can do here is we can take, we can take both of these out of the limit because as h tends to zero, this will tend to one over sine x squared. So we get negative one times one over sine squared x. So this will actually be equal to negative one over sine squared x or negative cos cosecant squared x. Yeah, not, not cosecant x squared, it's cosecant squared x. So yeah, that was all for this speedrun and I hope to see you in, oh actually, hold on, no. At the very start, I promised to go over the basic differentiation rules because I mean, Actually, no, that comes in the next one. So, see you in the next one.